So if you have not spent the last decade associating the release of Top Gun Maverick with the consumption of footwear, uh, I feel like I have some explaining to do to anyone who catches wind of this. So more than a decade ago, when I was but a wee lad, I made the tweet. And if Top Gun 2 happens, I will eat a shoe. To quote John Hamm in a recent interview with shoe-eating watchdog Mike Ryan at Uproxx, like a lot of tweets, it hasn't aged well. Let me just say, I don't know, it was a different time? It really felt like a different Twitter back then. In my case, I, I found people who loved movies, and we congregated from around the world to talk about them, and recommend them, and spar over them, and shitpost, and enjoy the stuff that we liked to enjoy with other people. It was fun. Looking back... It felt more like an innocent time not to be overly nostalgic about an era that we've come a long way from, but before things kind of veered towards extremes and tribalism and brands, it felt like you could tweet about the Green Lantern movie, let's say, and then not take too much flack for having a bad opinion. Now, of course, you can jump on Twitter and even movie people are, like, going to war and rallying the troops, and it's a dark place. It's weird. But back then... I don't know. I was making friends on Twitter, having fun, and this tweet, this Top Gun tweet, was just part of the game. Anyway, it's 2010. Word breaks that Tom Cruise, producer Jerry Bruckheimer, Tony Scott, who directed the 1986 original, would reunite to make a Top Gun 2. Hey, Dad's favorite movie is gonna get Dad's new favorite sequel. Apparently when this news broke, at least according to eyewitness testimony and people's fuzzy-ish memories, but clearer than mine, I guess, I was out and about when this news broke. I was in New York City at a tiki bar in Hell's Kitchen called Reunion, great bar, and when the news broke, we must have seen it on Twitter or something, and my buddy, the aforementioned Mike Ryan of Uproxx, said, hey, they're making another Top Gun, and I said, no way. That movie will never happen. If that movie happens, I would eat a shoe. And he said, oh, really? Tweet that. <laughs> now, why would I think this? I had doubts. Cruz, not a franchise boy outside the Mission Impossible movies. He was going, now is the time to make Top Gun 2? It just felt very strange. Uh, it felt like the Crow remake, the thing they constantly talk about, mining the IP. Uh, it's great. It comes up on deadline like once a year. Like, why now? Why would it happen when the theatrical movie business was maybe going in a different direction? Less star-driven, less reality-driven, more Marvel and fantasy. I guess what's strange is that if... You asked me when I would have tweeted this tweet, I would have said maybe like 2012 when Tony Scott tragically passed away. I, I never thought Scott and Cruz would do this. I mean, I didn't think it would happen in the first place and I didn't think Cruz would do it without Tony Scott. Top Gun was one of a kind. Movie folk cited up there with Jaws and Star Wars as the movie that changed blockbusters forever and a lot of that had to do with Tony Scott and what he could do with the camera bring it into the sky and this aerial combat that he put together and the alchemy of Come on, him and Tom Cruise eat that and, show. okay all right i okay i get it i i'm moving on yes i challenged tom cruise's work ethic the man who once strapped himself to a freaking airplane and flew in the sky and and for some reason i didn't think he'd be able to do top gun 2 and he did and now i have to eat a shoe patches maverick here I heard your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. Well, I bet you're just as dangerous as me, since you now gotta eat a shoe.
<laughs> when you fly by the seat of your pants, it's risky to make bets on the release of Top Gun 2, especially when it's right around the corner. So here's my tips. Start with the laces as if you're eating spaghetti. We as method actor have such vivid imagination that I can make this shoe taste like a five course meal. Then you use a good steak knife and cut the whole thing off in tiny pieces. I wouldn't want you to choke and take your breath away. <laughs> Use all the seasoning desired. Personally, I prefer the Montreal mix, but that's my choice. Remember, there's no points for second place. Bon appétit and enjoy Top Gun 2 on the big screen. Woo! What's funny is that now that Top Gun Maverick has rolled around, it's actually coming out. Um, I'm completely unprepared, or I've, I felt that way. Despite years of hearing about the tweet, I hadn't really thought about how I'd go about eating a shoe for the amusement of a few people online without kind of inflicting substantial bodily harm. So obviously the first thing I did was I told my wife, look, I have to eat a shoe this month. Um, and her response was fair. She said, no, f off. You are not eating a shoe. You can't die right now which is actually uh, very supportive when you think about it. Of course, over the last few weeks, I've also received a lot of suggestions from people who've been waiting anxiously for this day to arrive. Uh, those onlookers include the folks even at Paramount Pictures who actually sent me a cake on the occasion of the big day, which is absolutely nuts when you think about it. <laughs> the, the cake thing is funny because I've heard from a lot of people, like, just eat a cake. They could make cakes that look like shoes now. Have you seen the Netflix show, Is It Cake? They can recreate a sneaker out of Fundin. Oh. But I'll be honest, that felt too easy because I have brain worms. This is the part where I admit that I have both a history of a, a weak stomach and also a history of making like poor digestive choices for other people's amusement. In college, I did the milk gallon challenge, where you drink an entire gallon of milk in an hour. And it kind of went well, until it didn't. And here's some footage of me chugging a Four loco and then throwing up, and then returning to chug an entire other Four loco just because some of my podcast co-hosts would laugh about it later. And a few years ago, I decided to drink an unopened bottle of the Venom-flavored Brisk Iced Tea one year later after I was sent it, because... I I don't know. We had to celebrate the one-year anniversary of Venom somehow. It's like, um, Gak. Looking back, the shoe thing feels like... Destiny. So when people recommended that I eat a shoe cake, I don't know, my immediate thought was, well, that feels like cheating. It lacks a certain self-punishment. So obviously I was looking for outside-the-box ideas, and I came up with a few. I thought I could maybe just get away eating a comic strip from Jeff McNally's long-running comic, Shoe but I had a weirdly hard time finding a print copy of Shoe in a newspaper, so I just printed one out and ate a piece of paper and it wasn't a very good bit. I found these rawhide dog chew toys in the shape of shoes, uh, and in theory, for my research, rawhide is pretty safe for anyone to eat, maybe. There's a lot of debate over whether dogs should even be eating rawhide, uh, but after boiling it and trying to gnaw on it, I didn't really get very far eating this rawhide baby shoe thing, which I now own too many of. Uh, if anyone needs one, hit me up. The thing I get started getting really stuck on in thinking about eating the shoe was that I really wanted to wear the shoe I would eat. That was cool. It's not just about eating a shoe, it's about wearing the shoe. Werner Herzog famously brazed his boot in 1980 to commemorate the great Errol Morris's directorial debut, Gates of Heaven, uh, documented wonderfully in Les Blank's short film, Werner Herzog Eats His Shoe. In watching the film again, I was highly disturbed, and I feel like maybe shoes of the 1980s were more acceptable for this than they are today. I also just don't think I'm German enough to just eat a normal off-the-shelf shoe. It took me about five minutes of Googling to have a very clear sense that there's not really a shoe on the market that I could just chow down on. A number of organic shoe companies claim to have products that, that might fit the bill, but I, I reached out to a lot of them and, and no one returned my request uh, for insight into the edibility of their products. Very strange. Uh, and while there is a myth that you can safely eat Crocs, 
Representatives for Crocs also declined to comment for this video for what I would think is obvious reasons. They don't want people to eat Crocs. Come on, eat the show! Eat the oh, show! Oh, all right, come on! Have you heard of showmanship? Have you heard of evocative storytelling? All people want is plot! Jeez! Anyway, I need to get more creative. I needed a challenge. I needed to go beyond the traditional shoe. I needed to go full maverick. And to do that, I needed to take a little inspiration from a man named Charlie Chaplin. In his 1925 film, The Gold Rush, Charlie Chaplin famously eats a shoe on screen. But here's the twist. It's actually a replica of a shoe made of black licorice. And the other fun fact is that uh, Chaplin apparently ate the licorice boot like 63 times and eventually suffered from insulin shock and was rushed to the hospital where he had his stomach pumped. So that's good. For me, Chaplin may have given me the best case scenario, which is this. If I could make a shoe out of something edible, then actually wear the shoe outside, then come back in and eat the probably dirty shoe, I could fulfill both the grotesque promise of this challenge while also not keeling over from chemical poisoning. I feel the need. The need for a speedy montage of me making a mold of my foot, then baking homemade fruit leather in my oven, then taking the pieces of that fruit leather and fashioning them into a shoe. Listen to the laughter roar. But now they made that movie, gonna have to do a chore. Now it's time to eat a shoe. Now seriously, what? you're gonna have to eat a shoe. Sizing up some leather, dreaming about souls tonight. Sneaks or sandals, there has to be an end in sight. Now it's time to eat a shoe. I'm sorry, but it's really time to eat a shoe. You'll never finish this dumb thing until you swallow footwear and your pride. You'll never know all you can chew. Until you try to cobble through the night Making bad tweets isn't where you want to be But there's no turning back Gastrointestinally Now it's time to eat a shoe Gonna lick those lips and then go eat a shoe Now it's time to eat a shoe Please just go and eat a shoe Out there and I'm gonna wear this shoe and then I'm going to eat this shoe. Eat the shoe. Mm. Mm. 
I'll go in my yard because uh, that's dirty. <clears throat> this really gives new meaning to fruit by the foot. I think it's time to eat. Eat that shoe. Where to begin? Where to begin? I will say the walk through our yard uh, decimated the shoe. It is uh, visibly grassy and speckled in dirt. I think it's. I think I just need to dig in here and and get over myself. <laughs> doctor who hopes that I will not become diabetic will not enjoy this video. I think one thing to keep in mind is uh, a lot of anything at one time is probably not a good thing. I'm gonna try and avoid the pieces that have uh, really glue on them. I need water. <laughs> I need water. So I should drink. That's it. That's it. The shoe has been eaten. Okay, I'll eat this part. No my head glowing. That's been made good on. I am full of sugar. Well, Top Gun 2 really happened. I haven't seen it. But I ate a shoe. Why? Werner Herzog actually made a great point at the end of Les Blank's documentary. He said, To eat a shoe is a foolish signal, but it was worthwhile. And once in a while, we should be foolish enough to do things like that. Look, I do want to say at the end of this that we're in a very serious moment. There's a lot of things to worry about and to figure out and to advocate for. Um, and so much of life can feel like... A scramble to figure out how we can all play a part of that but i can't help in doing this stupid thing uh to remind myself and remind everyone out there that that doing things that don't make any sense and that feel kind of trivial that's important too i am a serious journalist yes really and a devoted storyteller a person who cares a lot about people but i do think lightheartedness silliness foolishness to use Herzog's phrase, is, is an important way that we can stay above water. It's valuable, and we shouldn't forget it, no matter what being online makes us feel. Eat your shoe, I guess, is what I'm saying. To that point, thank God this is over, and I never have to talk about this ever again. And now I can eat cake.